I was feeling pretty confident with the new default approach I had landed on for managing state with Signals and RxJS. I have a couple of full videos on this, but the quick recap version is, we have RxJS streams at the top that represent things that trigger changes. This might be a stream of some data loading from an API, but it can also just be a subject that is manually triggered as the result of some user action. In a service, we subscribe to each of these sources and anytime they emit, we describe how that event should change the state. The state is set into a signal and then we use computers to get the state we are interested in from that signal or to derive new values based on that signal. This creates a solution that is both reactive and declarative from after the point where the state is set. It creates this nice top-down flow of data, which I think is the secret source to creating predictable applications in Angular. Changes are always introduced from the top and everything flows predictably downward. Everything is updated automatically when changes are introduced because everything is automatically derived from whatever upstream things it depends on. But then a YouTube comment had me questioning this perfect little world I'd created. Let's say we want to extend the example app I created so that you can go to the detail page for a specific article. This is easy and something I'd already covered, but I only covered an example where all of the data was already loaded into the app and could be easily derived from the current state. But what if we need to send a new HTTP request to load the detail data for this one article? This is a very common use case that I just hadn't considered for this approach yet. And my initial thought was that it was going to be a little ugly, which I wasn't happy about. Now it turns out the solution is quite simple, but it revealed a flaw in my Angular brain. The reason this broke my brain in the first place is because for whatever reason, I was seeing the smart component as the sort of main entry point for the component where we supply all of the dependencies, which is mostly true. So if I wanted to get the ID from the currently activated route to fetch data for that ID, I would inject the activated route into the smart component and get the ID parameter that way. But this creates a problem. The ID changing is a data source. And so where I want it is with all my state management stuff in the service. I need a data source that looks like this in my service. But how do I get this ID value as a stream from my component to my service? Do I subscribe to it and then next a source in the service? I could do that, but now I have imperative manual subscribes popping up in places I didn't want in my application. Maybe I could use to signal and an effect or something like that to next a data source in the service with the ID value. But this is really just the same sort of imperative code in different clothing. I could just get rid of the service entirely and just define the state management in the component itself. Then there will be no need to pass it to a service in the first place. So that would get rid of the problem, but then I'm going to have this bloated component. So the solution was annoyingly simple and obvious in retrospect. Uh, the solution was to do the same thing I was already doing for getting values from a form controls value changes in the service. Just define it in the service directly. Or in this case, just inject the activated route into the service instead of the component. Now I can create my data source without the issue of imperatively passing data around. It has been moved to the top of my data flow along with everything else that introduces changes in the application. And this should work with anything, really. The only thing I can think of where the approach of just moving things up to the service wouldn't work as well is with something like view children or content children. These also provide streams which theoretically you might want to incorporate into your state, but these are more specifically tied to a component's template and can't be simply shifted to a service. I'll cross that bridge if I ever get there though. And ultimately you still always have the option of just doing an imperative subscribe of some sort and nexting a subject source in the service if there is no cleaner way to do something. So the trick is to move things that introduce changes in the app to the top of your data flow and to avoid any imperative downstream changes that are going to mess with this predictable downward flow of state. In this case, I was able to maintain this idea better by noticing a flawed idea about the role of components in my Angular brain. If you found this video interesting at all, a like or subscribe before you go would be much appreciated. And I hope to see you back here again for another video.